now we will discuss a very simple but important problem of identifying of identification of second moment of area about different axis of a irregular shape so here in the problem it is given that we have to identify the moment of area moa basically stand for the second moment of area about both the centroidal axis as well as about an axis passing from the line ad so let me explain you that if it is given in the question that you have to find the moment of area about the centroidal axis that means first you should know that which are the centroidal axis and the centroidal axis means the axis passes from the centroid so now my job is what my first job is to identify the centroid in the body then i will consider two centroidal axis suppose for example that this is the body uh, like this and i calculate the centroid somewhere here because if you see the body carefully i will know that it's a symmetric body so suppose here is the centroid that means now these two will be my centroidal axis and i can name as x x and y y so if i will calculate i x x and i y y the first part of the problem will be over that the find the moment of area about both the centroidal axis then it has been asked that you have to find the moment of area about an axis which is not actually centroidal but passing from this line that means one axis which is passing in this way we have to find the moment of area about this axis after uh, so these are the three different moment of area we have to calculate in this problem so let's solve the problem step by step so as i always uh, suggest the student that in the case of calculating the centroid as well as the moment of area first what you should do you should make a very big and clear picture so that on the picture you can identify different axis as well as different point so now in this case this is my body and my first job would be to make the references and as usual i consider the extreme bottom as one of my reference and the extreme left as one of my reference but at this point let me tell you i'm not going to consider this bottom as one of my axis why because if i will observe the body carefully i can identify that this is a symmetric body and the axis of symmetric is this horizontal line which is passing basically from the center of the vertical or the height of the object suppose this is the 16 size as i will see in the picture that this is my 16 size so this would be the line which is crossing from a distance 8 and this is my symmetric line so whenever i have a line of symmetry my job reduced and in this case i will consider this is my one of the reference so that i don't need to find the uh, centroid for the vertical side i only need to find the centroid for the horizontal direction so now i am considering this this is my one reference axis and my second reference axis is again the extreme left so now my first job is to find the centroidal axis and to find the centroidal axis i have to calculate the centroid first so now as uh, generally i consider that first i will make a table i will consider two section my one section will be this larger uh, rectangular body and my second section would be the semi circular part which basically going to be subtract in my final formula so as i know that in case of this uh, the rectangular body the centroid will lie here that will having a distance since this is my 12 distance so this distance would be 6 similarly in case of the semi circular body the centroid will lie here and the distance of the centroid from its diameter is defined by 4r by 3 pi i request all the student please remember these values because you cannot derive all uh, you cannot derive these answers all the time so whenever you solve the problem particularly when you are attempting the exam you should remember this formula so for the semi circle i know that here is the centroid for the rectangular body here is the centroid and then i have to find the centroid so now i have two section my section 1 is rectangular body 
I usually consider a standard table so whenever you will follow the table the chance of doing errors will be minimized so please if if you have any other approach it's okay but if you want to follow my approach I would suggest that you make a table and in the table first you define your section so this is my section 1 and this is my section 2 then you define the area of the section so in my case my two areas are 12 into 16 this is my area 1 and the position of the centroid is 6 so this is my x bar for the first body for the second body uh, the area will be the half of the area of a circle so it will be half pi r square and I know the radius is 5 which is given in the question itself so the area of the semicircle body will be 5 square by 2 into pi now what would be the position of the centroid of the semicircular body as I given here uh, as I mentioned here that it would be 4 r by 3 pi but actually this is not the distance from my reference my reference is here so the distance of this centroid from the reference will be subtraction of this distance from the total distance and my total distance is 12 so the distance which is required here will be this one and that will be basically 12 minus 4 r by 3 pi I always request my students that make a larger figure make all the point on the figure and make mark all the distance on the figure itself so that there will not be any confusion when you will make the table so the first job would be the making a figure clear figure then making the table so in the table now I have my area I have my individual centroid value so I can directly apply the formula for the centroid in this case this would be a1 x1 minus a2 x2 divided by a1 minus a2 and this negative sign is coming because I have to subtract this semicircular part so I am calculating my centroid and it is coming approximately 5 because 5.0029 meter that means I can consider that my centroid is at a position 5 so now the next job is to mark the centroid here so this is your centroid let's say this is C and the distance of the centroid is 5 which I have already calculated now as I have calculated the centroid my next job is to find the moment of area about the centered axis so suppose I have marked my I will explain this with, this with the help of this picture that this is my second picture and this is my centroidal position which is distance 5 away so let's consider that I am interested to find the moment of area about this axis let this is my axis y y so now as I know that this standard value about this axis is not given and what I need to do first I have to find the moment of area of individual section about their own centroid for example in this case I have two sections one is the semicircular body so I know that for a semicircular body the centroid uh, the moment of area about its own centroidal axis which is passing here from a distance 4 r by 3 5 from here is 0 0.11 r to the power 4 I am again requesting you should remember this formula so the value of moment of area about the centroidal axis will be 0 0.11 r to the power 4 similarly in case of the rectangular body this is my axis and the value of the moment of area will be basically b d cube by 12 where in this case d will be 12 and b will be 16 always remember the cube term will be the term which is going to be cut so for this axis this value will be basically db cube i can write that the 16 into 12 cube by 12 so when i calculate these two value i am getting the moment of area about this axis not about this axis and now my next job would be to transfer these two axis on my required axis and that I can do by using the by applying the parallel axis theorem so if I will see carefully I know here that I have to shift this axis at a distance h1 and I have to shift this axis again at a distance h2 and if I have a clear figure I can visualize in the figure that this distance that this distance is 6 because this is the centroid of a rect this rectangular body and the center is passing from a distance 6 from here and I have to shift this to on this line which is 5 away so the distance h1 will be 1 here similarly this is my axis which is 4 r by 3 pi away from this line and I have to shift from here to here so what I need to do first I have to calculate this distance which is so my this distance will be basically the 
distance from here to here is 12 minus 4 r by 3 pi and then I have to subtract 5 from this distance. So the h2 will be basically 12 minus 4 r by 3 pi minus 5. So now I have shown you on the figure that first I have to find the moment of area about individual centroidal axis and then I have to shift using the parallel axis theorem. So from the parallel axis theorem I can say that the moment of area for the first body which is my rectangular body about this axis would be I1 which is about this line plus area of the rectangular body and the square of the distance from for that I am shifting. So in this case this is my formula so let's directly write that 16 into 12 cube by 12 plus 16 into 12 and 6 minus 5 square which is 1. Similarly in case of the second axis I have to shift this axis from here to here. So this would be I2 plus A2 H Y2 bar square that means I2 is nothing but the 0.11 R to the power 4 and this a2 will be pi r square by 2 and h2 will be this value. So when I will put all the value in this formulation I am getting these two value and I know that the net moment of area about this axis will be the subtraction of these two value because this area actually doesn't exist in the problem but to solve the problem I have to consider a semicircle part so my final formulation will be i y y which is the net moment of area about this axis and that would be basically I11 minus IY2, IY1 minus IY2 and when I will put all the value in this formula I am getting my answer is the 1492.29. So now I have solved one of the part of my question that is find the moment of area about a centroidal axis one centroidal axis and my centroidal axis is the vertical axis. Now I have to find the second part that is the second centroidal axis. So second centroidal axis will pass from this line and I know that this is again passing from these two points. So I first I have to calculate the moment of area for the semicircular and the rectangular body about this line and then I have to again use the same philosophy to get the values. So the second part will be finding the moment of area about the second axis. So if I will go back to and see the original picture here, I can identify that I have calculated the centroid and now I am interested to, I have, I have already calculated the centroid about this line and now I am interested to find the centroid about this line. So if I will see here that this is my picture and then I am interested to find the moment of area about this line basically this is my x x axis so what I need to do first I have to find the uh, basically this is the problem that uh, this is my problem and I have to find the moment of area about this line so what I can do letting the moment of area about a vertical centroidal axis now I am going to calculate the moment of area about the horizontal centroidal axis and for that let's see this picture that this is the same uh, diagram here I am having one section which is semicircular body and the total rectangular body and I am interested to find the moment of area about this line. This is pretty, this is relatively simple case. So I know that in case of a semicircular body, the moment of area about a line which is basically passing from the center and cutting the semicircular part into two halves is de defined by the pi by 128 into the diameter power 4. And in this case, I have two body. One is the rectangular body and this is the axis for the rectangular body. This is 12 value. This is 16 value. So moment of area about this line will be basically 12 into 16 to the power 3 divided by 12. And for this rect uh, semicircular body, it is pi by 128 diameter power 4. So I know that now I have to find the net moment of area about this line and then for that I have to subtract these two value so my net moment of area about this centroidal axis because in this case if you will see the previous case I shifted my axis from this line to here and from this line to here because the axis for the centroidal axis was not passing from the center of these two individual section but in this case as this is a symmetric axis I know that my required axis itself passing from the centroid of the two individual sections so I, I don't require to shift my axis I need to simply take these two axis 
and I have to simply subtract the value and here is the answer that for the axis which is passing from the centroid of the body having a moment of area defined by 3850.56 and if you recall the previous answer the moment of area about this line was 1492.29 I request all the viewers or the student that I tried my best to get this numerical value correct sometime it may happen that the I, I did I do some calculation error so you please correct by yourself I request all of you you solve these problems by hand by, by yourself just don't see the video and try that okay I can solve the problem when I will be it will be asked you try by yourself problem step by step then only you will be able to solve the problem in the examinations so now I have solved the two problem the first case was to find the second moment of area about the both the centroidal axis so now in this case if I'll come back and I'll see my picture that I have calculated the second moment of area about this line I have calculated the second moment of area of this line and now the third part is to find the second moment of area so in this case if I am interested to find the second moment of area about this line again I am going to repeat the same procedure but what I am going to my case that this is my body which is 12 and 16 and I individual uh, centroids and then what I need to do I have to shift these two about this line because this is the line about that I have to find the moment of area which is AD and this is the line AD so what I need to do I have to shift this axis these two axis on this line and for that I have to calculate the shifting distance because when I will apply the parallel axis theorem I need that the moment of area about of the body about its individual moment of, uh, uh, centroidal axis then I have to add this term which is representing the area of the body multiplied by the square of the shifting distance so in my case the if I will see the picture here that I know that this is my first body and its own centroidal axis is here the second centroidal body the second body having a centroidal axis here and I have to shift these two axis from this line to this line so for the first case I have to shift by distance 6 and for the second case I have to shift a distance which is 12 minus 4 r by 3 pi so I'll come back and I'll see here that I know that my distance here I'm showing the two distance that these are the two distance for that I have to shift my axis and the finally when I will apply the parallel axis theorem this would be my formula so this is the basically the transfer of the first axis from this point to this point and this is the second expression which is showing that I am transferring this line from here to here and ultimately I am subtracting these two terms because this semicircular part actually doesn't exist and I have to subtract so when I will put all the value in this formulation I am getting my answer which is coming out 5322.66 so now if I will summarize I can summarize that I have calculated the moment of area for three different axes first I calculated the centroid which resulted here so I calculated my centroidal uh, I calculated my moment of area about this y y axis then I calculated about x x x axis and finally I calculated about this line here you should remember that if the axis is directly given to you for example in this problem instead of asking the moment of area about the central axis only it has been asked that find the moment of area about this line in that case no need to calculate the centroid what you need to do you have to simply find the moment of area of these two sections about their own moment uh, centroidal axis and simply you have to shift here and in this case suppose this is i1 and this is i2 so your final answer will be i1 minus i2 we will solve some more problem in other video so that it will be clear to you that in different cases what sort of approach you have to adopt it thank you